All right, today we're going to look at logarithmic functions, functions with logs. You've seen most of this in Algebra 2, a quick or a big review, and maybe a couple new things too. So here we go. Um, the inverse of an exponent or an exponential function is a log function with base b. So we write that like this. We write it with um, log base b of x, and what that means is b, you know, b to some power would equal x. That's how you would kind of look, look at that. So for example here, uh, let's just graph that one down at the bottom. So let's go ahead and take a second and graph that. The way you graph logs is, it's the inverse of exponent. Remember, with exponential functions, they cross the y-axis at 0. Well, this one, I mean at 1, this one crosses the x-axis at 1. Uh, the 3, because it's bigger than 1, means it's log growth instead of log decay. And it's going to go like this. It's going to get closer and closer as an asymptote to the y-axis. Everything that was true yesterday is getting reversed today because they're inverses. Yesterday, the x-axis was an asymptote. Today, the y-axis is an asymptote. Uh, yesterday went through 0, 1. Today, it goes through 1, 0. And that's pretty much it. That's what your graph's going to look like unless there's some shifts and things in there. Okay. A relationship between logs and exponents. That's what I was trying to say on the last slide. I got a little bit ahead of myself. If you see this, log base b of x equals y. IFF, remember, is, means if and only if. What that means is b to the y equals x. So you take that base to that power and it has to equal x. That base to that power equals that number on the top. That base to that power equals that. I think I have you evaluate some. For that first one, just based on what we just did, that means 2 to what power is 16? Hopefully you know 2 to the fourth power is 16. That's all you got to do. Uh, part B, 5 to what power is 1 over 125? Now 5 cubed is 125, so if you were to flip it, it'd be 1 over 25. Remember, negative exponents flip things. Uh, log base 3 of 127, 3 cubed is 27, so 3 to the negative 3 would be 1 over 27. And the last one says 17 to what power 17? Well, hopefully, you know, that's just the first power. 17 to the first power is 17. All right, there's some basic properties of logs. The first one is um, anytime you have a log that equals zero, it will equal zero anytime there's a one right here because anything to zero power is one. Um, when the base is the same as a big number, it's going to equal one, obviously, because b to what power is b? It's the first power, no matter what those numbers are. If the number right here has an exponent on it and the, it's the same as the base, b to what power is b to the x? Obviously, b to the x is. Uh, that would look something like this. Like if you have a log base 3 of 3 to the 4th, obviously going to be 3, obviously, because 3 to the 4th power equals 3 to the 4th power. And if you have an exponent, and it's kind of missing here, if the exponent has the same base, if log is in the exponent, that's about, I have to draw a B right there, and that base is the same as the big base down here, whatever the number is after log is what it is, because remember they're inverses, and they, they would just cancel and you get x. When you do f of f negative 1 of x is x. We've done that before. All right, a couple more to evaluate here. So it says log 8 of 512. That's asking you 8 to what power is 512? Cubed. 8 cubed is 512, and you can play with that on your calculator a little bit. Here's what I was talking about. We have a big base 22 here, a little base 22 there. Because logs are inverses of exponents, your answer is just 15.2. Common logs are logs of base 10, and you'll recognize those because there won't be a base there. Just say like this first one where it says evaluate down here, just says log 10,000. That would be 4 because it's asking, basically asking you 10 to what power is 10,000. In this exponent, uh, there's not, nothing written there, so it's understood to be base 10. Uh, they would, they're inverses of each other, so it's just 12. That'd be log base 10, 14. All you do there is you take your calculator, which I'm opening right now, and you can just punch those in. The good thing about common logs is you can punch them straight in your calculator. Your calculator does base 10. So I'm just hitting log 14. They usually want you to go four decimal places. And when I punch that, I got 1.14. Sorry about that. I'm having a hard time here today. 1.14. One, <laughs> 1.461. Still having a hard time. Um, the next one, log negative 11. That does not exist. Think about it. You cannot raise 10 to any power and get a negative number. So those are dead giveaways that it does not exist. I probably should have put D and E instead of um, a no solution symbol, but you can't do it because you can't raise 10 to a power and get a negative number. Natural logs are base E. All the properties that hold true for base 10 or base 5 all hold true for these. They're just going to have you do some calculator practice. These are on your calculator. Now, this one you don't necessarily need a calculator because it says natural log. And when you see LN, automatically it means base E. And because this is numbers also E, whatever your exponent is is your answer. 
I'm going to go down right below that. He, again, natch log is your exponent. Logs are inverses of exponent because the bases are both E. The answer is just 4. This one, D and E. Uh, it's been a long time. I guess I should have said this. E, the number E is really 2.71828. And it keeps on going, going, going. And there's no way to raise that number to any power and get a negative number. You just can't do it. And lastly, they're going to give you one like natural log 7. Uh, you need to punch that one in also. We'll go forward to one place is 1.9459. So basically, you know, when you do natural log, and natural log is actually LN, not NL like you would think it might be. And everything that holds true for regular log holds true for natural log. All right, this is what the graphs look like. You do, I graphed one for you on the first page, but if it's growth, meaning by growth, I mean when you do a log, let's say you have a log, this base right here, base B, if it's bigger than one, it's growth. That's what it looks like. That would be your domain, your range is uh, all reals. There is no y-intercept because your y-axis is an asymptote, your x-intercept is one, uh, y-axis is an asymptote. In behavior, there is no... You can write left-end behavior like this when it approaches zero. We haven't really talked about that yet. I'm going to worry more about the right-end behavior. Continuity. All right, let's look at the other side. If it's decay, meaning this number right here to B, the base is less than one. The graph goes down instead of up. A lot of this stuff is still true. Domain's the same. Range the same. The x-intercept is the same. Asymptote's the same. End behavior is the same, basically. Uh, continuity's the same. The only difference is it's decreasing instead of increasing. Okay, one more slide here. Uh, it says use the graph that we just looked at to describe the transformations. All right, so if they would give you x plus 1 because it's inside. You've done these forever now. You would say that shifts left 1. All right, the second one, two things. It shifts right 2 because you have a 2 inside. So it shifts right 2. And it also reflects across the x because there's a negative in the front across the x-axis. Okay, I've written so much here. That's not looking very good, so I'm just going to talk you through this last one. Part C, you would say it shifts right 3 because of the minus 3 inside, and it's also been vertically stretched by 5 because there's a 5 in front of your log. And that's all there is for today. A uh, big review, basically, on logs. Hopefully it wasn't too bad, and we'll work on it in class like usual. See you tomorrow.